Hello and welcome back to part two of Before You Buy. Today I want to talk about QNAP NAS. Again, one of the brands I talk about on this channel quite a lot. Personally, they are the one that I fell in love with first when it comes to all the different brands in network attached storage over the years. They are very much the more uh, trend setter for me in terms of certainly in terms of hardware and definitely more and more in terms of software. They're brands that bring a lot of the uh, new innovations in NAS to the uh, you know to the whole field of servers first. You've seen stuff from Thunderbolt, NAS from them, the very first ones to crack that. They were some of the earliest brands to really introduce some of those higher 10 um, GBE connections on more affordable levels. And the innovations on the software level have become have been coming fast and strong over the last few years, seeing more and more um, innovative ways in which you can interact with your data in you know, things that we wouldn't have even considered once, which are now mainstream. And with their brand new ZFS file system uh, in QUTS Hero arriving with commercial grade home NASes and small business and prosumers having access to QNAP applications on the ZFS platform, they are a brand that has challenged a lot of the preconceptions of data storage, making it far more interesting. But they are not for everyone, hence why today's video before you buy five things that you need to know about QNAP and QNAP NAS before you buy. Doesn't mean they're a bad brand. This is not about rubbishing a brand. It's about you being informed as a consumer in what you are buying. So the first thing you need to know about QNAP NAS as a brand is when you first boot it up, if you don't have a vast amount of technical knowledge, it can be very overwhelming. It's not overwhelming in the kind of, ah, I hate this, but... When you first boot the device up and you've installed QTS, there are quite a lot of things on screen immediately thrown at you. Almost every application will pop up and say, do you need a hand? Here's a quick start guide. Quick, flick through these and I'll tell you how it works. And that isn't for everyone. Some applications, when you open it up for the first time, a little tutorial never hurts. But perhaps a pop-up that would say, do you need a hand? Click yes, and then it shows you would be good. But otherwise, when you boot a QNAP NAS, all too often when you boot an application for the first time, it bombards you trying to help you, and that in itself can be very, very frictional. Everything from the resource monitor really throwing a lot of information at a number of you that you may not be aware of, to the applications throwing you as much help as you want and recommended applications and recommended actions for you can be a little bit overwhelming. And although their platform is still pretty user-friendly for the most part, it's not quite up there with the likes of Synology in terms of finding a nice balance between hand-holding and overwhelming you in the face. So do bear that in, Q uh, in mind with a QNAP that although it is relatively straightforward to set up and, and you know the applications are very, very good, it will bombard you with a lot more information than most NAS brands on day one. Now, going back to that subject of innovation, the second thing you might want to know about QNAP NAS as a brand, and if you do invest in a QNAP NAS, is Often, yes, they're incredibly innovative, and yes, they have broken the mold in a number of NAS hardware and indeed software features before anyone else, but arguably sometimes they get there a little too soon. They introduce a lot of hardware and software early doors, and then you start utilizing it, and it's not quite as fluid and as stable as you'd like. They generally always iron out the wrinkles, uh, within the first six to 12 months. And again, that is when it comes to um, Thunderbolt now, that is when it comes to a lot of the applications um, with uh, facial recognition and QBR face and stuff like that. A lot of their applications from virtual JBROD to hybrid mount to QMaggie, the photo recognition software, to their virtual machine platform, to Linux station, to the lot. They have brought a lot of these hardware and software innovations to the table, but often when they arrive early doors, they're not as smooth as you'd like, and they do seem like uh, a little bit rushed sometimes. They do feel that way. And some of that some of that hardware is brought to the table so fast that you feel when you do get your hands on it that a little bit longer spent on it or being released a little later might have been for the benefit. They do get there in the end. But when we look at things like the front-mounted USB um, access, they had a whole system where their NAS is had a USB DAS port on them, so you could directly connect to it like a DAS via USB 3. Sounded great, but it wasn't as plug and play as it appeared. And a number of you did find that you weren't getting USB 3 speeds via that IP protocol. Same goes 
for this system of um, the combo cards, the QM2 series. The QM2 series from QNAP, to me, is one of the best things they've done in terms of accessories now, with a huge array of SSD cache cards, 10 GBE cards, multi-port and combo cards to add NVMe SSD cache and um, uh, the 10 GB on the outside. But when they were released, the PCIe didn't seem as evolved as it could be. And as the cards have released over time, they've got better and better and better. But when they brought it to market first, there's no denying it did feel like you weren't getting its fullest potential. You were getting an idea, but it didn't feel like it was at its fullest ebb. And that's something with a QNAP innovation you should be aware of early doors. The first thing, uh, the third thing, is to do with the priority in terms of support of their um, software and hardware. They do have an extensive array of applications in QUTS and a number of the applications they have are genuinely breathtaking when it comes to your sitting there going, this does everything. You know, um, hybrid backup sync three is easily still one of the best backup tools out there. Uh, virtualization station, fan bloody tastic in terms of its support of virtual machines. But you do get that feeling when you use a number of the applications that as soon as they bring the application to market, they are very keen to go, oh, it works with this third party hardware software. It works with all of this third party stuff. And you do find more and more that although the core applications are QNAP, they do go to great lengths to say, we will take it this far, use your third party. We see it uh, in the utilization of opening office files, for example, although they've got file station, um, uh, uh, Q filing and Q search, after that, you suddenly have to use Microsoft Office. There's a plug-in there, which is great, by the way, but it would have been nice for QNAP to have their own Office package there. Same goes for the surveillance. They don't do their own cameras. They do all of their software. They do some great stuff in QVR Pro, but after that, you still have to use third-party cameras. And there's more and more instances when it comes to, like, uh, they utilize Skype in some cases, when they talk about Rune Server quite a lot, an enormous degree of support of Plex Media Server, you get this feeling that, they do have a tendency to lean on the third-party developers in terms of support and collaboration quite a lot. Now, that's not a bad thing for everyone. A number of us, you know, from our Sonos sound system to our Amazon Fire Stick, you know, we bloody love using our own third-party stuff a lot of the time. But you do want that feeling that it's a choice, not a necessity. And sometimes it does feel that way with a lot of the QNAP platform. Um, Another thing you should know about QNAP NAS as a brand, if you're going to invest in uh, their hardware solutions, is the range is enormous. Of all the NAS brands that I talk about here on the channel, their range is, you know, and again, literally exhaustive. You will go through it, and I know it sounds like a non mature, but, you know, trust me, it's a word. You um, will look at their range and go, wow, I want to buy a 4-bay. Why is there so many 4-bays? And there are. There I've got four bays with 32-bit IRM processors, 64-bit IRM processors, 1 GBE, 2.5 GBE, 10 GBE. Then you go to your Intel-based processors there. They've got two or three different versions of four bays. And then from your Intels, you're going to your AMDs, your AMDs, you're going to your Intel Core, your Intel Core, you go to your Xeons. There are just so many four bays, and that's just four bay. What about two and six and eight and rack mount? QNAP has a huge range of solutions, which... On the one hand, is a very good thing because it allows you to really tailor your budget beautifully. So you can say, I've got two grand to spend. I want to spend the lion's share on this kind of functionality and less on this. Their hardware uh, portfolio allows you to scale your budget very, very well in terms of memory, in terms of CPU, in terms of base, in terms of functionality and what it can do. Multi-user, 5-user, 10-user, 50-user. But... It's a lot of information to take in on day one. And there aren't a lot of buyer's guides above and beyond my own, arrogantly, he said, that allow you to funnel, you know, quite frankly, hundreds and hundreds of solutions down to a simple three or four. And it's something that QNAP really needs to work on as a brand. You can't bring that many solutions to the table and not allow people an easy way to filter it down than a few drop down boxes the last thing you should probably know about qnap as a brand and this comes kind of hand in hand with that whole system of prioritizing um your budget 
Generally, with QNAP, you do find they have shorter warranties. This is something we're seeing less and less, such as the 53D series arriving with three years of warranty and a number of their other newer solutions arriving with three years and some of the rack mounts, again, arriving with five years of warranty, but they still generally arrive with shorter warranties than a number of their contemporaries. And the biggest uh, comparison I would make there is the Synology XS series. That's their enterprise grade stuff. And their rack mount stuff, pretty much every Synology rack mount is three years warranty. And any XS system has got five years of manufacturer's warranty. That is something you don't see as much on QNAP. The way they scale it is the price of the devices are a little lower overall, but you can buy warranty upgrades. So it allows you again to scale your purchase. But there's a lot of different warranties and there's different warranty um, packets they're color coded to every different NAS system and although you do make a saving if you don't want to plow your money into long-term warranties it's still confusing as hell and it still leans into that idea that it's an enormous array uh, to go through they have got a huge worldwide presence they've got offices probably more worldwide offices than most of the other brands that I'm going to talk about in these um, things you need to know videos but there's still no avoiding that they are a brand that although they're quick to the punch early doors will often bring this tech to the table 90-95% done and fix it en route. And a lot of that does come across when you do read about a lot of the hardware. It's still a great platform and for me, still easily sharing. You know, they are joint first place with Synology in my heart. But there's a lot of things you need to know about QNAP to make sure you are buying the right NAS for you. Thank you so much for watching. Do check out these videos as I go through more and more NAS brands. And if you do enjoy this, click like. It really helps me understand that what you guys like and helps me make more videos like this for you. Click subscribe if you want to learn more. Buy your NAS from Span. Visit me at nascompares.com for all the guides. And I will see you next time.